So in this lesson, we're going to address a little problem that's happening in our scene when it comes to the interaction between different objects. If I go ahead and select one of my blocks, I'll go ahead and select this block right here, and I'm going to place it. And of course, it's going to fall down when I run my scene. If I place it above a coin in my scene, and then of course I run my scene, what's going to happen? Well, as you can see, hopefully, the block collected the coin. What's going on here? Well, we can actually see another example of this. If I go ahead and take that same block or any one of my other blocks and I put it over the fall zone that we just made in the last lesson. The fall zone is designed to be an area that detects physical objects entering it. Now, by that, we mean the character. If the character falls into the fall zone, we want to reset our game level back to the beginning and restart the game. In this case, if the block falls into the area, if I go ahead and press play scene, well, we don't have to wait very long because you can see that my scene is restarting because presumably off the side of my camera's view, that block is falling into the area. And so we have a problem. So in this lesson, we are going to address two parts of Godot called collision layers and collision masks. Collision layers and collision masks are a property of pretty much any object that you can have in your 3D scene. If I go ahead and select my Steve character, who is over there, and I go over to his inspector, there is a section called collision. And if I go ahead and expand that section out and I make my inspector panel a little bit wider, you can see that there are collision layers, which are different numbered boxes that we can light up uh, and turn off, and there are collision masks. What are these? Well, essentially, these are ways of organizing categories of objects, like player objects, like different items in your game, like enemies, into different conceptual layers to separate them. Why do we want to do that? Well, we want to control what categories of objects can collide with what other categories of objects. So you can organize objects into layers, and then on a per object basis, you can tell each type of object or each object what other categories of objects that that object is allowed to collide with. And that's what masks are for. Before we jump into actually editing these buttons, and by the way, on any type of object like our blocks, we can find there is a section for collision as well with all those same boxes for layers and masks on our grid map. It's over here as well. What we want to do before we start editing collision layers and collision masks to stop this problem from happening where we can have objects that aren't the player collecting the coin and objects that aren't the player entering the fall zone. And there are many, many more examples of this. We need to name our layers. So I'm going to go up to my project settings, which you should do as well. And under the first tab, the general tab, I'll scroll down on the sidebar to find the section called layer names, specifically 3D physics layer names. You can see that when we go to that section, there are spots to name these different layers, which correspond with the numbered boxes. What I'm going to do is suggest that you name these layers exactly the same as me. So I'm going to name layer one player because we're gonna put any players in our game on that layer. And there's only gonna be one player object, so it'll be the only thing in that layer. Layer two, we're gonna call ground. Now, I recommend that you write these all in lowercase letters. Don't put spaces, don't put capital letters. It'll make it easier later on. Uh, in layer three, I'm gonna name it item. So anything that's an item, like a block or a coin, will go in that layer, perhaps. Anything in layer four is going to be an enemy. And layer five is going to be for the fall zone. Okay, so you can make more layers as you see fit. If you end up adding other features into your game with other categories of objects, you can name those here, but I'll go ahead and press close. What I want to do now is tell each object in my game what layer it's on and what other types of objects it can collide with. So let's start off with our Steve object. What I want to do is not change Steve's collision layers and masks right here in level one though, because I might use Steve in other levels. And so I want to change his collision layer and masks 
in his own scene. So I'm going to press his little scene clapboard icon to jump into his original scene, and then I'll select his root node here. And if I change over here in the inspector with this root node selected, the collision layer and masks here, it'll propagate out to all of his instances and all of the game levels that I have. So I'm going to leave Steve, my character, on layer one. And if I put my mouse over that layer one box and I just let my mouse sit there for a moment, you'll see it shows me the name player, which is the name that I gave layer one. I want Steve to be on that layer. That's great. But what other types of objects do I want Steve to be able to collide with or interact with in my game? Do I want the player to be able to interact with other player objects? Mm, I don't need that. So I'm going to turn the mask off for layer one. Do I want Steve to be able to collide with the ground? Yes. So I'll turn the ground layer two on. Do I want Steve to be able to touch items in the game? I sure do. Do I want Steve to be able to touch enemies in the game? I sure do. Yep. Do I want Steve to be able to collide with the fall zone? Yes, I do. So I'll turn on masks two, three, four, and five. That's done. I can save this scene. Control S. Let's keep going. I'll go back to level one. The next item I'll look at is the ground. Now, luckily, the ground is not multiple objects. The ground is entirely one grid map. So I'll select that grid map, go to the collision section, which I've opened up here. And I'm going to tell the grid map that it is on layer two, the ground layer, and I'll turn off layer one. For the mask, I need to make sure that the ground can collide and interact with the player, uh, which is layer one. Other ground objects, no, I don't need that. Items, uh, that's up to you. It depends if you have falling blocks in a separate category from coins, just in case you have coins that slightly intersect with ground pieces you might want to make a separate category of layers for different types of items in your game. For me, I'm going to make that uh, collision mask on because I want the blocks to be able to collide with the ground. Uh, do I want the ground to be able to collide with enemies? I sure do. Do I want the ground to be able to collide with the fall zone? No, so I'll leave that turned off. Are you getting the picture here? Let's keep going. Uh, for each one of the blocks, I don't want to change each individual blocks, layers, or masks. I want to go into the block scene. So I'll click on a little clapboard icon there and I'll select its root node, go over to its collision section. The blocks are going to be on the item layer three and the block should only be able to interact with, uh, well, the ground and the player. So I'll turn on layer one and layer two. Should enemies be able to collect uh, coins, which is going to be in our items layer? No, uh, maybe blocks could be used to um, block enemies. So you would turn on the enemy layer if that was the case. It's up to you. Do you want blocks to be able to touch the fall zone? No, you don't. So you'll leave layer five or mask five off. Okay, I'll press Control S to save. I'll go back to level one. I'll save that. What else do we have to do? Uh, coins. Coins are another scene. So I'll go into the scene of the coin with a little clapboard icon. I'll select the root node of the coin, go over to the collision section. Coins are items, which is layer three. I'll turn off layer one. Coins should only be able to detect uh, the player. So I'll leave mask one on and leave everything else off. Are you getting the idea? I'll press Control S to save and go back to level one. I have adjusted the collision layers and masks for my blocks. I'll collapse that little uh, section there for Steve, for the coin, for the grid map. The fall zone is last. I'll select that fall zone, which is just an item in this level. And I will go over to the collision section. The fall zone should be on layer five, the fall zone layer. And the only thing the fall zone should know about to collide with is on layer one here. It's a player. If I go ahead and press control S to save, and if I've done everything right, if I select level one and press play scene, the game should, we have one little problem here. And I think I know what that is. If I go ahead and close my game and go into my Steve scene, I think that there is an item in this scene that needs to have its collision layers and masks adjusted 
uh, separately. And I think that is the Raycast 3D. The Raycast 3D has its own collision mask section. This is where you're telling it what kind of object the Raycast can detect. We want the Raycast 3D to detect things on the ground layer and not anything else. So I'll turn on layer two and everything else will be off. I'll press control S to save. I'll go back to level one and I'll press play scene. Does it work now? Let's see. Can I explore my world? Can I go up and down slopes? Can I jump? Can I collide with blocks? Yes, I can. Can I collect the coin? Yes, I can. Can I fall into the fall zone? And does the game restart? It sure does. I think we have successfully covered collision layers and collision masks. That will be it for this lesson. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.